Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and finally, I have unlocked Interstellar Cambo. Definitely not as quick as a lot of other content creators out there, but getting it within the first month of the game coming out makes me pretty happy, and now I feel like I can actually go play the game. I'm not even going to lie to you. I jumped in that 12v12 playlist here today, and it was kind of weird, because I wasn't going for a challenge. I wasn't trying to level up a gun. I wasn't trying to do anything besides just play the game. It really did feel weird. For the first time since launch, I was actually looking at my Kraya class thinking, okay, is this a good class? Are these good attachments? Like... For the first time, I'm actually playing the game, it feels like, because before that, I was always working on camos, always working on leveling up my guns, always trying to do different kinds of challenges and things like that. And I will say, Interstellar looks fantastic. It's a very good looking camo. The challenges are relatively easy, but some of these challenges are really buggy and weird, which I will be covering a lot of those here in this video today. So we're going to basically have this be a short Interstellar guide. Nothing crazy. It's not going to be like a 40 minute video breaking down every single challenge because a lot of them are straightforward, but some of them are not. And again, we're going to be covering that. Now, first things first here, you have to get your guns leveled up. I see so many people doing this the wrong way. When you're making your class for leveling up your guns, it needs to look like this. You have the engineer vest on, which is going to not only going to allow you to see enemy equipment through walls and things like that, but more importantly, it's going to give you an extra tactical and it's going to give you faster charge on your field upgrade. So what we're going to do is we're going to equip our decoys with the engineer vest. We actually get three decoys we can chuck out every single time we spawn in. And then the DDoS field upgrade, which is incredibly good. I mean, I see so many people, they're sweating, they're trying to blow up their guns and whatnot, and getting kills is good for sure, but especially when you're playing on small maps like Rust or Shipment or Meat, let your equipment do most of the work for you. Like, while you're getting your kills, while you're playing the objective, while you're doing all the things that get you score, you're having your decoys getting you so many assists. You have the DDoS, which will not only DDoS enemy players, but it's also going to get rid of all those pesky trophy systems that are trying to eat up your decoys. Basically, you're getting DDoS is like every 30 seconds you're throwing out three decoys every time you spawn in it's the fastest way to level up your guns obviously you also want to do this on a small map if the playlist is available for you again rust mint or meat which is currently active those are the best maps for leveling up quickly because they're small and you get a lot more action a lot more kills a lot more assists a lot more score a lot more everything that is the best way to level up your guns right there it's better than zombies it's better than any other nonsense play on a small map chuck decoys everywhere use your DDoS and the reason why I'm saying this is I talked about it in the previous video, but it's weird. I don't see enough other people doing this to level up their guns. It's always me. And then for some reason, they're like, well, how come he's got twice as much score at the end of the game as everybody else? It's because I'm throwing my decoys every time I spawn in and I'm DDoSing basically on cooldown. That's how you get tons of score. That's how you level up your guns. Now, when it comes to the challenges, most of them in this game are very straightforward. I couldn't believe some of them. Like the priceless challenge for the cat AMR sniper rifle was just get three suppressed headshots. That was it. Not in one bullet, not in one life, just three in general. And a lot of these challenges are pretty basic. Like, you know, go get 10 kills with a laser sight equipped. I'm like, okay, that's not even like a challenge, but I'll take it. But there are some challenges in this game that are really buggy and really weird. The first one we're going to be talking about is going to be the three kills with one magazine. Normally, that's not an issue, but sometimes I'm sure you've noticed it doesn't like to track properly. And the reason why that is, is because you're not reloading enough. What I'm actually showing you right here is one of my final challenges was to get three kills kills in one magazine with the Bruin 100 round magazine light machine gun. I'm like, that's not even hard. It's 100 rounds for crying out loud, but I went through. I'm getting all these three kill streaks. As you guys can see, I'm just killing and killing and killing. And after two games, I only had two of that challenge finished. I'm like, what? How does that even make any sense? Well, it's because the challenge itself is kind of buggy. So whenever you get your three kills with one magazine, just make sure you reload. Even when it's the very next life, fire one bullet and then reload just to do it so that it thinks that you're on a brand new magazine. I, I went through two straight games, did not reload even one time. And because of that, the challenge only counted once per game, which was really frustrating. So you have to reload for a new magazine to happen. I don't know. It's weird, but that's how you go about getting that challenge done. You have to do it for a number of weapons here in the game. Another challenge that gave me a lot of trouble would be the penetration kills for light machine guns as well as sniper rifles. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard that you can shoot through chain link fences, and that's going to make the challenge relatively simple. And that is true, but it's not every chain link fence. And even then, it doesn't always count. It's really frustrating. So here are going to be some examples. I need to get 15 penetration kills on the cat AMR sniper rifle. Well, here I am on Skid Row. I go right down the middle. I shoot through the door. 
Guess what? That does not count as a penetration kill, even though I shot the guy clean through the door. Doesn't count. I went to the back of the map. I was getting kills from behind the chain link fence. Again, also does not count. Now, when it comes to maps like Scrapyard and High Rise, however, for some reason, those maps, the chain link fences, do seem to work, but not all the time. It's a really buggy challenge. Like, for example, here on High Rise, I killed two people from the exact same spot, but one of them was a penetration kill, whereas the other one was not. Really doesn't make a ton of sense. Then there's these other areas on high rise like if you're laying outside the c building i think it's called you're laying out there and you can kind of like wedge yourself next to the floor a little bit of terrain right there and you can shoot right through that especially if you have the good penetration ammo attachments on but again sometimes it will count as a penetration kill other times it doesn't it's all completely nonsense it's all completely random like how is this a penetration kill but this one here was not it, it just it doesn't make any sense so i can say the best way to do this is probably on high rise if you get lucky and you can play on shipment there are a couple of areas on shipments where you can shoot through the containers. I think everybody knows about them. But in general, high rises fences work pretty well. And then the fence on B-Dom in Scrapyard also works pretty well. It's probably one of the most annoying challenges just because it feels like there's no rhyme or reason to it. Like the fences work on some maps, but not other maps. There's no real consistency to it. And again, these are penetration kills. So it's kind of difficult to even go for them. You have to hope that there's somebody behind some form of cover and that when you shoot through that cover, you actually kill them and also that it actually counts so very annoying challenge but again high rise and scrapyard are probably your best bet now another challenge which is also buggy but it's also buggy in our benefit because it makes it a lot easier for us would be the three kill streaks or the five kill streaks occasionally you'll have a gun like the striker for example where they challenge you to get 10 five kill streaks right but the challenge itself is bugged it doesn't really reset upon death so basically if you just do the math if you need 10 five kill streaks you need about 50 kills total depending on on where the deaths line up and then you'll just be finished it, it's really that simple i remember seeing the knife challenges one of the knife challenges i think was like three five kill streaks or five five kill streaks something like that and i'm like ah i mean knifing's pretty easy in this game especially on a smaller map but five kill streaks can be stressful to go for when you're knifing you know especially when you just want to get your challenge done well again the challenge is bugged and it counts through death so basically if you need three five kill streaks it just means get 15 kills and the challenge will be done <laughs> that's just really how that goes so that's one of the challenges that's kind of bugged in our favor i imagine eventually sledgehammer is going to fix that so if you're getting close to those challenges right now go through and do them now while they're bugged because it's a lot easier just to go get a bunch of kills as compared to getting a bunch of kill streaks now i've seen a bunch of people who are annoyed with the rgl well thankfully we don't have to do the rgl anymore if you don't want to we have new dlc weapons that came out here with season one and as such you can choose to do one of those as compared to doing the rgl grenade launcher but honestly the rgl is not that difficult there's only six weapon levels to get through it's incredibly lethal in hardcore like it's downright op in hardcore hardcore even if they're rocking something like EOD and when it comes to destroying 25 pieces of enemy equipment which equipment means equipment basically claymores and proximity mines field upgrades do not count which is really annoying if you just go in the game chat and just type in there like hey can somebody like please place claymores down on the other team I'm this close to finishing the challenge usually there will be one or two people being like all right I'll do it could you also drop me some claymores I'm like well hell yeah right towards the middle of the map there's gonna be claymores it's not like you're cheating or boosting you're just making sure that when you're running through the map you're dropping claymores down and then they can see the claymores with the engineer vest they blow up your claymores you blow up their claymores it's really not that hard and honestly it's kind of heartwarming whenever i see people doing that in my lobbies because it's an annoying challenge nobody ever really runs claymores or anything like that i mean it's not 2009 anymore and so they take what could be a very annoying tedious challenge and they make it really fast and easy because the community is kind of working together to get it done which i really enjoy and again you don't even have to do the rgl anymore you can choose to do the ram 7 assault rifle or the new snipe rifle or whatever but yeah it's not really that hard of a challenge and then so if you're like part way through it already i recommend just sticking through it because if you get in the one decent match where you're typing in game chat or talking in game chat and somebody agrees to put down claymores i mean you get the challenge done in one game and then after that you just go to hardcore get your double kills and then you're done the rgl is really not that difficult but what is difficult the final challenge i want to discuss here today enemies affected by your tactical it's so freaking annoying man it feels like luck basically only stuns and flashes work none of the other nonsense but even then your stuns and flashes it really feels like it has to be at the very beginning of them being stunned or flashed when you get the kill otherwise it just isn't going to count it's really frustrating and you have to do it for every single smg you have to do it with every knife you have to do it with one of the pistols i believe as well very frustrating very very frustrating challenge because it just does not seem to count most of the time but you will eventually get it done if you just basically run the engineer vest get two stuns on there i don't recommend flashes because they update 
Modern Warfare 3. So if a flash goes off behind somebody, they're not going to get flashed by it whatsoever. But if a stun goes off behind you, you're still going to get stunned. So run two stuns with the Engineer Vest, run the DDoS to get rid of all those pesky trophy systems, and then basically just pray that when you throw your stun that you go around the corner, there's actually going to be people there. I think the most annoying part was like you think there's somebody there, you chuck a stun, no one's there. You go somewhere else, you think someone's there, you chuck a stun, no one's there. And you're like, well, now I'm out of stuns. I guess somebody kill me, please, so I can go get more freaking stuns. But in general, aside from those annoying challenges that are kind of buggy, I think that the challenges we have here in Modern Warfare 3 are probably the easiest that we've ever had. I mean, it's not like Black Ops Cold War where we had to go through and get like 75 point blanks with some machine guns or a game like Vanguard where the Bren Light machine gun required like 300 freaking long shots. Like a while that stuff has just been taken out. There are some long shots. The getting kills on people affected by your tactical challenges are annoying. Other challenges are buggy and you have to make sure you reload even though the game doesn't tell you that. But Overall, these challenges are incredibly basic and they're incredibly simple, and I think they did a good job towing the line between challenging and time commitment, right? I think what they've done here is they've actually they've given us a challenge that does take a decent amount of time. You have to actually go for this and really work towards it. But at the same time, it's not completely wasting your time. You know, when I was sitting there in last year's game, Modern Warfare 2, trying to line up freaking long shots on my submachine guns and hardcore team deathmatch, just bored out of my mind. Like I really felt like my time was being wasted. I didn't feel like they valued my time as a customer. And I would say so many times ranting in videos or on Twitter, I'm like, I want to see one in Andy Ward dev grinding for Orion camo sitting there in hardcore team deathmatch holding down a sight line with a submachine gun going oh boy this is really fun and engaging like it was a waste of your time like most of the time it just it felt like they were like disrespecting the entire player base with how tedious and boring those challenges were and we have a couple of those let's be honest here within Modern Warfare 3 but in general I think Sledgehammer Games made the entire challenge process a lot more streamlined and a lot more engaging I mean say what you want about going for enemies affected by tacticals and whatnot, but at least you're running around as compared to sitting there going for long shots with every single weapon in the game. You know what I mean? So I think they did a pretty good job here. I think the challenges are difficult enough that you're not going to see Interstellar in every single lobby, but also you will be able to earn this camo if you really commit yourself to it. And that is a very fine line to walk. And I think they did it pretty perfectly here with Modern Warfare 3. But ladies and gentlemen, that is all for this video here today. It just it's weird, man. Like I'm going back into Modern Warfare 3 and for the first time, I feel like I'm actually playing the game like I haven't even tried search and destroy out in this game I haven't played anything like free for all I'm interested to give Warzone another shot you know I'll probably do the zombies camos as well just for fun especially considering all my guns are leveled up but you know it just it feels weird playing Modern Warfare 3 not going for challenges I'm like oh so I guess I'm just like playing the game now like trying to win trying to do well trying to get good footage from my youtube videos and stuff like that as compared to grinding challenges it feels weird it really does then i got that game on afghan there where i'm using a burst rifle on afghan took me all the way back to 2009 it did just lighting up people with a burst rifle on afghan going up the airplane and doing all that kind of thing it if it was fun it's fun playing the game to actually play the game now who would have thought so i hope you guys all enjoyed it let me know if you guys are going for interstellar down there in the comments thank you all so much for listening and i hope you guys all have a wonderful day.